she must make a way with me and he says, look, there's no point in staying on major roads because there'll be helicopters up, there'll be roadblocks, they'll have different things on major routes. He says, you need to get off and get rid of this. After us just hijacking it, <laughs> you need to get rid of this, he says. And, and uh, he was the only one in that car of the eight people in the car. He was the only one from the countryside. Everybody else was either town or city and had no sort of field craft as such. But he knew, you know, countryside's different. You need to lose all sense of visibility that anybody has of you, you know, become part of the countryside, so get rid of the machinery. We spotted this house and uh, drove up this roadway. I dropped everybody off, give them, whoever was getting into the house, give one of the lads a pistol. I just get in and take over the house. And the beauty about this house was, uh, you're looking at the, at the doorway on the way in, and to the right was uh, a doorway of like a built-in garage. So the all intents and purposes, from, from aerial view or Paylor's driving past, to look in to see the car that belongs to the house, and the murk disappeared from the face of the earth. We crossed a couple of fields, crossed the road, and we were coming to a river, the, it was actually the lagging. We then hid along a hedge and got into the water and hid along, hid onto the bank. There was a couple of cows in a field facing us, and they started running off. One of them was startled. We thought people were coming, and they did. It was um, RUC, military police, and prison staff. They were shouting about prisoners having been seen one of the RUC men, he pointed over to where we were and said, um, look, look at the way the water ripples on the bank there. And he think that's odd and stuff like that. And then he finally handed over his rifle to, to another R RUC man, got down into, if you like, a press-up position for a look onto the lip, and he was able to see clearly our heads behind the reeds. We, we were just clear to be seen. They took us out of the river. This was all under gunpoint. And then they stripped us naked um, and marched us up to a jeep. And then they brought us back around to the jail. They dragged us out by the feet from the van, dragged us in, um, kicked us in to the punishment cells. Jerry Kelly and his team made it to a nationalist housing estate in Lurgan, where they made contact with a former H block comrade. My memory of it is that Match of the Day was on. He was sitting there watching it, and I shouted his, he had a nickname, I shouted his nickname. And he, I mean, literally lifted about sort of whatever, six inches off the sofa. And I says, it's Jerry Kelly, take it easy. I says, we've just escaped from the hits blocks. He says, what, what? And then he sort of started recognizing me. And he was sort of trying to get the information. He says, when, her man, it hasn't been on the news. And he says, we've just escaped. And he says, I says, well, we're seen coming in here. I says, we stopped at the shop. I says, you need to get the OC. I says, and we need to be out of this district in five minutes. Mass escape from the maze. A prison officer killed more than 20 Republicans on the run. Most of them the following day, when people come down to visit me, um, they told me, give me a day. F me, because well, I seen the blood on, on his shirt, and uh, to me it was only a spot about about the size of the palm of your hand. There was no, no great deal of blood, but there you go. 38 prisoners escaped. 10 of them were recaptured by tonight but the remainder are still at large. Any way you look at it, the escape from the H-block has driven an astonishing, battering ram through one of the most carefully constructed high-security prisons in the world. It is very, a very grave incident indeed, the most serious in our prison history. Uh, the uh, Secretary of State, uh, Jim Pryor, has set up an inquiry immediately. And I think we must await the result of that inquiry. Uh, in the meantime, um, everything is being done to try to find the escaped prisoners and return them to prison. When they threw me in, into the cell, it was over the next five to ten minutes that the sudden that the 
that the, the feeling was coming over me. That it must have been, I don't know, euphoria, relief or whatever, that we had actually done it, that we had busted the jail, busted it wide open, so-called famous hate blacks, most secure prison in Western Europe, blah, blah. A Thatcher's dream, her, her sort of breaker's yard. That I was full of adrenaline, euphoria, relief, feeling absolutely successful in everything that we had tried to do that day. And I can honestly say that my personal circumstances did not permeate through to me in any way that I can remember. You've taken over a house with a husband and wife and three kids, two lads at about 11 and 12, and a baby at about nine months. We just said, look, if we can secure a, a promise from them not to go to the peelers for 24 hours, we'll, we'll take it at that. That'll give us a head start. So I said, how are you going to do that? So I said, well, I'm going to talk to, to the woman. So I actually said, here, look, uh, I'm left with uh, two choices here. One is, we're going to leave here as quickly as possible, as soon as possible, and be out of your lives. And I says, and the only way that I can guarantee that you don't lift that phone is that I take the eldest one of your kids so far down the line with us and release him. And the woman was just horrified by this prospect. And she says, well, you wouldn't do it, wouldn't do it. And I says, well, the second choice is that you, as a Christian, will give me your word that you will not contact the authorities. So they give a promise, and she says, that you can tell your boss <laughs> that uh, just to prove it to him, if he's a man of his word, we're, we're, we're people of our word, and we're prepared to get the good book out and, and swear on, on the good book that we'll keep our word. So they get all the family to put their hands in the Bible and swear that they wouldn't divulge anything for the period that they had agreed to. 72 hours. She agreed to 72 hours. <laughs> The OC who I knew uh, had, uh, had been in jail with had arrived. He says, I can put you in an oil dump, an arms dump. He says, it hasn't been used for years. It's on the floorboards of a house. And uh, we said, well, if it's a dump, it's never been found, and they've been reading lurking for whatever number of years we were doing it, it sounded the best option. Get down, the surprise was you know, we were expecting a dump to be, you'd be able to set up in it or something, you weren't able to set up. It was actually under two rooms with a connection in. You couldn't actually turn if you were laying down, so you could only lie down and you couldn't actually turn without hitting your shoulder on the uh, the rafters. So it was fairly it was fairly tight. So we said to the the, the um, couple that were there, we'll just we'll just stay down. Unless as, as the children would say, you had to do number twos, unless you couldn't, you couldn't afford. But, uh, I mean, if you're in, you're in it or whatever, we've got uh, coffee jars and all sorts of stuff down to set it. That's the best way to do it. We spoke in whispers. Any time would they speak anyway. We got a radio down with an earpiece to try and hear the news. So we were hearing straight away what was happening, because it was obviously headline news and all of that. And, of course, if, if you aren't up getting, you know, showered every day and, and what have you, and then after a while, because we were there for two weeks, after a while you start to smell and, you know, we may have been used to smell, but we knew clearly that uh, there, there was uh, body odours and all of that. A representative of the Northern Command uh, came to see us and uh, sort of discussed how we were doing all of that. and. Um, I was dizzy when I went up. I, I went up to talk to him, and it was actually, it was, I was actually dizzy. My balance was gone uh, when I went up. So it was that type of, uh, it was that type of uh, atmosphere. Well, let's keep it going. <laughs> 